Well, hey there, Cypress and all things woodworking friends. Welcome to our home. My name is Mark, and this is my beautiful wife, Sarah. Hey, everybody. Mark and I started Cyro and Ivy three years ago. We started making with handmade coasters, and we've progressed over the years to making tabletops, shelves, and these beautiful coffee tables. That's right. And along that journey, we've met a lot of great friends in the woodworking community. A major one that comes to mind is Southern Cypress Manufacturers Association, who just so happens to be the official sponsor and wood provider for this amazing project you're about to see. Southern Cypress Manufacturers Association is a nonprofit organization that specializes in the promotion of Cypress building materials. And if you head to their website, you're gonna find a wealth of knowledge, project inspiration, and support for both professionals and consumers alike. So if you wanna know more about them, click the link in the description below to go and check out their official website. And if you'd like to learn more about this beautiful modern coffee table, the wood was donated by the Southern Cypress Manufacturers Association. Be sure to follow along the rest of the video and let's head out to the wood shop. We start every project off by diagramming our build. In this case, it's a 46 inch long by 26 inch wide rectangle with an open interior for additional storage. Nothing too crazy, but the key is getting those mitered corner cuts very accurate so it's easy to join them later on. The first part of the milling process is figuring out which face of the board is concave. This is going to be the face that points down on our jointer so that we have two edges of contact. We also figure out how much of the board we need to cut off in order for it to fit through our jointer. Our jointer is 8 inches wide, so I cut them just a little bit below 8 inches. Once we figured out that one board, we went ahead and did it for the rest of the boards. From there, we ran all the boards through the table saw to get rid of all the extra material, as well as to create a cleaner edge for an initial pass through the jointer. Now remember earlier, I mentioned that we identified the concave side of the board. You can see here with this board, that's the side facing down. And that gives you at least two points of contact on the surface of your jointer, rather than dealing with a convex side where the board would wobble left and right as you move it across the face of the jointer. So now that that face is flat, we're gonna reference it on our planer and get the other side parallel with it. At this step, we're not taking the boards to depth, we're only cleaning them up so that we can take them inside for the next step in the milling process. And that step happens to be filling any cracks and voids with resin. You may not be the biggest fan, but this is going to be your best friend whenever you've got an imperfection in the wood that needs to be stabilized. So we mix parts A and B, we fill in those voids, and we give them time not only to dry, but to acclimate. After about a week, we took the boards back out to the wood shop and checked them for flatness. Thankfully, one face on each of the boards was still flat, so all we had to do was put the other side through the planer to clear off any resin. With both faces parallel to one another, we could take the board over to the joiner and put on a perpendicular edge. We then used that edge to ride along the fence of our table saw in order to get another parallel edge as well as take the boards down to width. They were now ready to head over to the planer in order to be taken down to depth. It's a long process, but one by one, just keep feeding those boards through until they all get to your desired depth. Since we use high quality wood that's been properly dried and jointed, we don't worry about alternating end grain. We just find a grain orientation on the face that's pleasing to us and we roll with it. And once we do, we make sure to number the boards and we make sure to draw some large shapes on them so we can reference that for alignment later. And speaking of alignment, we always do one additional pass through the jointer where the boards meet. We alternate the face of one board against the fence while the next board passes through away from the fence. 
This is going to nullify any deviations from 90 that are in your jointer and give you extremely tight joints. Using a clamp, we dry fit the panel and then we mark out all the locations for our biscuits. Using our biscuit joiner, we align it to those lines and make perfectly placed holes. When it comes to officially putting the panels together, it helps to have a buddy, especially if you're putting more than two boards together. It gives you time to put on the glue, spread it, add in your biscuits, and then actually start to put the panels together. Having a second person helps you hold one in place while you tap it into place with a mallet. We then added our parallel clamps and additional clamps as needed. After 24 hours, we removed the clamps and hit the top and bottom of each panel with 80 grit sandpaper. This removes any bumps or snipe so that everything is perfectly flat when we cut it to length. To do that, we used our trusty track saw. I say trusty with a little caveat though. While we trusted it to do our 90 degree cuts, we didn't fully trust it to do our 45 degree miters. And that's why after cutting all of the panels, we took them over to our friend Simon, who has an amazing saw stop table saw with a cross cut extension. He was able to make all of our 45 degree cuts for us with ease. And as you can see, they came out beautifully. They were accurate and they were clean, exactly what we wanted. What's more, because the cutoff pieces rested on his saw afterwards, we were able to save them for something you're gonna see a little later. Because this coffee table is going to have inside corners, we decided to sand all of the inside faces up to 220 before joining them. We knew if we didn't do that and we sanded them later, it was going to be much more problematic to sand all the way into the corners. We didn't want to have any markings on the faces from the sander running into them, so we took care of that ahead of time. Once that was done, we did a dry fit and assured that all of the edges were 90 degrees to one another, and we then marked lines for our biscuits. This is essentially the exact same process we did earlier when joining the edges of each board. Having these lines on both sides of pieces that you join together lets you know exactly where to put your biscuit hole so they line up perfectly later on. In addition to biscuits, we had a secret weapon up our sleeves, and that was the cutoff pieces you saw earlier. When attached to the faces of the panels, they create a 45 degree surface that's perfect for clamping. So we attached those to each side of each panel using hide glue. If you don't know, hide glue, unlike normal glue, can be removed with heat and enough force. So at this point, we used glue, biscuits, the buddy system, and a lot of patience to put everything together. You can see how clamping those cutoff pieces easily allowed us to hold everything in place while fitting it snug. Before doing a final clamp, we then checked the inside corners to make sure they were at 90 degrees and adjusted everything until they were perfect. Once they were, we added all of our final clamps and did a final tightening. It always takes more clamps than you expect it to. Now I'm not gonna hide this or try to sugarcoat it. This did not work out exactly as I planned to. It was hard to get the pieces off, and when I did, you can see that there was a lot of damage underneath. Thankfully, I was able to fix a lot of this with sanding, but you'll see there was one piece that I couldn't fix with sanding, and I had to use a little bit more ingenuity. Getting the excess glue off, however, was very easy. Just use a maroon pad, with some hot water and some elbow grease, and in no time, that excess glue comes right off. Dry it up, and you've got a much better looking surface already. Another issue we didn't originally plan for was having feet on the coffee table. We thought we would just have it sit right on the ground, but after taking a look at things, we thought it would look better if we added some simple feet inset on the bottom to make the coffee table look like it was floating slightly off the ground. Now here's the one area of damage that I mentioned earlier that I couldn't fix with sanding alone. The part of the wood that got ripped out was just too deep. 
So I took a piece of graph paper and traced the shape. I then cut that out and fit it into the void just to make sure everything was correct. From there, I laid that onto a thin piece of cypress and did a rough cutout with a jigsaw. I then sanded it and sanded it and sanded it until it fit perfectly into the void. I added some wood glue with wood filler I made on my own with sawdust and clamped it. After taking the clamp off, you can see it wasn't anything pretty, but with enough sanding and enough patience, that glue started to subside and we ended up getting left with something that blended pretty well. From there, we went about sanding the rest of the coffee table. Since we had already sanded the inside portions, we only needed to sand the outside faces and edges. We went all the way from 80 grit up to 220 grit, and we made sure to water pot between each of them. That gave us a perfectly smooth finish. And then we sanded all of the edges by hand for a light chamfer. With that done, it was time to attach the feet. We use these two pieces of waste material to get consistent placement without having to put any additional marks on the bottom of the coffee table and clamp them into place to dry. And once they did, we went ahead and added our top coat. That's right, we didn't mess around with the stain, we didn't do any Rubio. We just wanted to enjoy the natural look and color of the Southern Yellow Cypress that was supplied by Southern Cypress Manufacturers Association. That's why we used a water-based poly to minimize any color addition while still giving it a tougher top coat finish. so thrilled with how this coffee table turned out. We fell in love with the color and the build of the cypress wood. We are looking so forward to having many dinners as we all eat around the in the living room and cups of tea and time with family around this coffee table for years to come. Yeah, and if you're game players like us, you know that also includes games of Uno, oh, yeah. Settlers of Catan, oh, yeah. if you're a real player, <laughs> <laughs> and Monopoly Deal as well, right? Oh, for sure. That's a good for one. Sure. Check it out if you haven't. And you know what, guys? Be sure to check out our sponsors again. Southern Cypress Manufacturers Association. Great organization, great products, and they'll be a great help to you as well if you want to build something amazing with Cypress. And be sure to check them out on their website, on socials, and if you have any questions about this build, leave it in the comments below. And until then, go, go build, build something. something.